In terms of what you're paying for gas, I think I think you're right, and I think we're going to move to alternate sources. The governor has a has a real drive to do something about uh, about uh, about the use of, of uh, hydrogen as well, and uh, but he has to have some support, and that's one of the reasons I'm running. But let me ask you another question: How many of you know that? Seven million dollars a year are coming not out of your pockets as a subsidy to profitable ethanol companies rather than being used for highways of gasoline. Let's just see a show of hands. How many know that? Wouldn't you be out? Yeah, yeah, Jim Bradford, who, who we served together fighting in here, and, 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 and there are four people in the room. I fought that my first term. And uh, it just bugged the hell out of me. Because what I, excuse me, it really bothered me a lot. <laughs> because what I did is I proposed an amendment to that built up with that seven million that said that every ethanol company who gets money from the state must publish their financial statement. And if their financial statement shows that they are earning fifteen percent or more return on investment, they'll give back all of their subsidy. And if they are earning more than 10%, they'll give back half of their subsidy. Believe me, the pressure uh, was not to do it. But they weren't paying $4 a gallon. And I think this time, that silly subsidy from you, instead of getting it for your highways, I think I can get it done and get it back. I absolutely uh, disagree. I think that... Every pharmacist, A, knows before he goes to school, and by the way, we subsidize pharmacy in South Dakota. Every pharmacist, before he goes to school, knows what sort of prescriptions may be needed to be filled. Every pharmacist has a license from the state of South Dakota, not from anyone, not from God, not from his church, not from anyone with a specific uh, religious belief. I think given the license, given the pre-knowledge, I think it's a very dangerous thing because today the issue is whether a pharmacist will fulfill contraceptive. And that's really what the issue is. That's, that's not beat around the bush. Tomorrow it may be whether a drug that he is suspicious of but has been approved by the FDA will extend the life of someone that he thinks is already suffering badly enough. Or the next year it may be not filling the prescription for someone who he's, whose, whose religious beliefs he disagrees, I, I think there's no end if you allow personal conscience, thank you, to interfere with professional need if you're licensed by the state. Civic plan, as I recall your question, make insurance affordable. Now, how will we do that? Number one, we're going to, you started on it, we're going to eliminate the adverse, uh, uh, ad, ad, what do they call it, adverse, uh, uh, selection, where uh, people who don't think they need insurance, mostly younger people, will be required to buy it. They'll have to begin, partially what you said, they'll have to begin in companies like My Hills Materials, not even smaller companies, where everyone who is in that company will be required to, in, to, to accept the insurance. That, that'll, be, that'll be one of the beginning, and then to spread it further throughout the state. Because as we make the risk for insurance companies lower, the cost will go down. Number two, we need to do a better job of publicizing the present uh, risk pool. How many of you know that we have a, a risk pool that's available for older people? That's interesting. We, and I was part of the, of the committee that put that in. We have a risk pool where a, a number of dollars in the state are set aside to pay the insurance costs of those who either have had it before and lost it or who can't afford it because of, 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 a, of a precondition and all of the money has not been used to this state. People don't even know about that and we may need to increase that risk pool a little further. Then, then the fourth thing in terms of reducing cost is, rec is reducing the amount of, of disease which in this state that comes from uh, obesity and smoking. Uh, everyone thinks I, the names that I was called because I proposed the first did that dollar uh, a pack tax, which I lost in committee. No, I lost, I lost it in committee, but the people voted it in. So 
we must make cigarette smoking absolutely not available, especially to young people. And the dollar was to help them, maybe another dollar it'll take. Uh, and, and then at the same time on the obesity, we have to do something very specifically that we can, and that's a matter of over time, because both of those issues are large in South Dakota, but one of the worst states in those two cases. So those are the four ways to do it. Uh, one, use the risk pool. Two, require uh, insurance that people in rural insurance who don't think they need it, younger people. Uh, and three, uh, uh, do something about obesity. And four, uh, do uh, something uh, uh, about smoking. Thank you. We uh, sort of forgot about enforcing the time limit on the answer. Comes from a gambling. About 120, 122, 140 million. To, oh, for, first of all, you see, you know, I served four years in the Appropriations Committee, Appropriations Committee, two of them as vice chairman. So the, that 120 million dollars does go into something that's called the tax relief, um, the tax, uh, maybe tax relief. The, anyway, it, it goes into the education fund. Every penny goes into that and sits there. It doesn't go into the general fund. It really doesn't. But uh, given that. I absolutely agree with you because I literally, that's the advantage of having a six-year record in the legislature. I literally proposed a bill. Remember I was criticized for proposing tax bills when I ran last time and lost by 122. Uh, I won't talk about the people. But anyway, uh, I literally proposed a bill that would put one penny, no, 85 hundredths of a cent of a, of, of a sales tax increase, 0.85 which would have exactly matched the amount of money that we were getting then out of gambling and then would eliminate the need for the gambling money. 0.85 cents. I don't know now whether that is the, the right amount, but it was then. So I agree with you. We can replace that with a sales tax if we're willing to do it, but everyone says they'd far rather take advantage of those who have a weakness because their answer is just, well, after all, they don't have to gamble. And so it's a voluntary tax they're choosing. Don't put an involuntary sales tax. And obviously, my bill only got two votes in committee. Well, wasn't it 